Hi everyone and welcome to the Lorna Green Yoga YouTube channel. If you're new here, you are so welcome and if you're returning then I'm super grateful to have you visit me again. Today I've got a short sequence designed to improve your range of motion through your spine, relieving tension and creating space where you need it the most. Without knowing the exact reasons that you're experiencing pain, it's important to listen to your body. Don't wait till you feel that ouchy moment, but move slowly and notice whenever resistance arises. It's all too easy to get caught up in the desire to do something or make a movement happen, especially when you have an idea of how you think it should be in your mind and your body might be telling you a different story. So remember, if back pain persists, go and see a specialist in the field, get a diagnosis so that you can start to work on your healing. Now for this class today, you're going to need a soft block, a rolled towel or blanket, and if you have a yoga strap, grab that. If not, a scarf, a tie, or even a towel works just as well. Let me know in the comments how you feel after class, and remember, giving this video a thumbs up goes a long way towards growing the channel and being able to share more free yoga classes. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date. Now go and gather your props, get into something comfortable, and meet me on the mat lying on your back. With your props gathered, we begin today in Shavasana. What a great start to a class, right? <laughs> Coming down onto the floor. Grab a bolster if you have it. If not, uh, just a big pillow works really well. Under your knees and lower yourself down to the floor. Nice and slowly. If you have any pain in the body, just take your time to come all the way down. Make sure that your shoulders and your head are fully in contact with the floor. Take your arms to the side of the body. Let your legs fall to the side if that's where they feel like they want to go naturally or your feet to, to open out. And just let your body sink down into the floor. Feel yourself becoming heavier with each breath. Settle into your natural breath pattern. A teacher of mine many years ago once said that almost all the troubles in the world could be solved if we all just lay on the floor for a few minutes each day. This is a great way to begin to decompress your spine, to take gravity out of the equation so your joints can expand, your muscles can relax. We're always looking for very complicated answers to problems in the world when actually sometimes it's the simple things that work the best and quite simply lying back, well it doesn't get any more simple does it? And it is a truly wonderful, wonderful gift you can give to your body. Just taking one, maybe two minutes at the beginning of your practice to tune into your breath, to feel your body, experience what's going on in your body right now. Each time you inhale and exhale, perhaps lengthening the breath, feeling the rise and fall of your belly, the natural curves in your spine, all of these subtle nuances of change that take place as you breathe. And we never notice these things when we rush through the day. It's only in slowing down and finding some stillness that you get to really tune in. preparing to move. Take an inhale, bending your right knee, just gently raising the right leg away from the floor, maybe just taking a rest on the pillow before you draw the right knee all the way into your chest. And you can take a hold of that right knee either uh, on the kneecap or just to the back of the knee, whatever feels good and doesn't put any strain in the shoulders or around the neck. And do the same with the left leg now. You need to use, engage your tummy muscles to bend that left knee, just stepping it onto your bolster or your pillow and draw the knee into the chest. Begin to rock from side to side, keeping your shoulders, your head 
connecting to the floor, massaging out the lower back, just feeling all of the tension melting with each breath, fully supported by the earth beneath you. There's no strain, no stress. Crossing at the ankles, right leg over left. See if you can reach down to the outside border of either foot and draw the heels in towards your butt. Now, if you can't reach the feet, it's fine just to cross at the ankles and draw the knees closer to your chest. If you can reach down for your feet, see if you can hold on to the outside where the little toe is, drawing your heels down towards your butt, trying to keep your back connected to the floor. Take a deep breath in, gently letting it go, let that breath fall to the air, relaxing your arms as you do so. So you're not trying to force your legs into this stretch, but rather use gravity and body weight to assist you. So as your elbows are drawn down towards the floor, the hands on the feet, you'll just exert a little bit of pressure Without you having to pull or force your shoulders can stay in contact with the floor everything has the opportunity to relax soften to feel your breath moving through you your lungs filling with air and then as you breathe out maybe noticing if you can stretch into the body a little bit more maybe feel your upper arms drawing down towards the floor take an inhale releasing the feet you know uncross just draw the knees into the chest for a moment maybe rocking and rolling forward and back side to side and then crossing the left ankle over the right such simple movements that have a really profound effect in your body. Draw your heels down towards your butt, holding onto the outside border of your foot. Just adjust your hands to suit the best position for you. And remember, if you can't quite reach your feet, that's okay. Just hold on to the knees. Draw the knees towards the chest. With each exhale, notice if your body invites you to move a little bit deeper. Always remembering that this is not about how far you can go into a pose. It's not about how extreme you can move your body, but rather noticing how you feel. Being able to surrender to whatever your body needs in this moment. Surrender is a very challenging thing in our modern world. If you can learn to do it on the yoga mat, if you can take that strength, and it is a strength, can take that outside into the world with you. Take a breath in, releasing the feet, uncrossing once again, just draw the knees in towards the chest, maybe rocking and rolling just a little bit. Reaching down if your pillow is in the way, maybe just using your feet. In my case, I'm just going to roll it out the way. <laughs> Reaching for your strap if you have it, uh, if you're using a, a towel, a tie, anything really that's sort of strap-like will work uh, perfectly well for this. You're going to grab whatever you've got to um, hook over your foot. Draw your right knee into the chest, keeping the left knee bent and the foot flat on the floor. Take your strap or whatever you've got to use for this uh, exercise and just make sure that it's hooked over the ball of your foot. So it's not right in the centre where the arch is, but just where the ball of the foot sits. With the knee bent, use a little bit of traction from the, the hands to draw your knee closer into your chest. And you can keep that knee bent for the moment. Your hips are pressing down into the floor. Now the action of doing this might feel 
a little bit of discomfort around about the, the right hip, the right buttock. You might feel this into your quads because there's some resistance going on here and your quad muscle is beginning to fly. Take some breaths and remember with this, you don't have to have a straight leg for this to work. In fact, if you find that you're straightening your leg and your hip is lifting away from the floor, then you're probably going too far. So a little bend in the knee is absolutely fine. It takes all of the strain, you're putting a lot of strain on your hamstrings when you straighten this leg. And that has a, a domino effect all the way up into the lower back. And you want to try and relax the back as much as possible. So a little micro bend in the knee or maybe even more than a micro bend in the knee is going to benefit you so much here. Try not to think about where your, your body could or should be, but rather where it needs to be right now. If you do feel that straightening the leg is going to be beneficial, then of course do it. But honestly, just that little bend, really good for your lower back. Small movements from side to side. And then just draw the knee towards the chest and then let it soften away, drawing it down and softening. Keep your shoulders on the floor, your back straight. There's no twist in your back, no stress. Drawing the knee all the way into your chest. You're going to cross your foot over your body and just let the right ankle relax at your left knee. Using your hand you can press that right knee away from your body, maybe stepping the left heel towards your butt if you want to make this more of an intense sensation. Just pressing down through the heel, through the knee of the right leg. Your foot flexed so that there's no um, there's no pull. There's no, you're keeping your knee safe by doing that. And if it feels right to do so, you can just press gently up through the left leg. Either taking your hands to behind that left knee, or if that feels like you're raising yourself away from the floor too much, just hang on to the right ankle, the right knee. You can play around with how it feels to move in towards the body and to gently press away. Just keep that left leg relaxed and soft. You're going to do that with the hands behind the knee. Make sure that the shoulders stay down on the floor, your back stays on the floor. You're not allowing your back, your, your lower back in particular, to roll away from the floor. Just keep pressing down through the sacrum. Feeling that stretch across your butt. And remember, you're not doing this to the point where you start to feel ouchy. Don't wait for the ouchy. Pay attention to how your body's feeling. When you find that first point of resistance, wherever that is, that's where you want to hang out. And hang out until it feels good. And only then do you begin to move. Return the left foot to the floor. Draw your right knee into your chest. Just give it a little squeeze for a moment. And then release the knee, release the leg. Maybe straighten out and then bending, placing the foot on the floor. You're going to take a hold of your strap once again. Bend your left knee into your chest. Giving it a little hug before you hook your strap around the ball of the foot. Keep that bend in the knee as you send the sole of the foot up towards the ceiling. Shoulders stay down. Your back stays down. You might feel a stretch into the hamstrings even with the knee bent. If you've got tight hammies like I have, you will definitely feel it. <laughs> Remember, we're not resisting, not forcing, but rather really tapping into body weight, gravity, using the tools at our disposal. 
of which we have many. Slow movement from side to side. Perhaps drawing the knee a little closer to the chest or of course if it feels good straightening your leg but make sure that as you straighten you're not raising this hip away from the floor. Keep the back press down and that little soft micro bend in the knee is just enough to take the stress away from the lower back, creating some traction with the strap against your foot. All of your tension in your breath. Surrender. Don't resist. Drawing the knee towards the chest and then you're going to take that left leg across the body, just placing the left ankle at the right knee. This time, a little press to the left knee and just pay attention whether you need to maybe bring this right heel closer to your, your buttock so that you can feel something more. And if you're feeling enough here, if you're feeling it, you're doing it. It's such a great mantra one you should remember in all things in life. But if this is not quite enough, then you can just reach up through the right toes, raising that right knee and interlace your fingers either at the back of the leg or if that feels like you're struggling a little bit, you're putting some strain on the neck or through the shoulders, you can just hover and hold on to the left leg, playing with the position. There's a little more strain if you do it this way because you have to hold the right leg in the air. It sometimes feels nicer around the neck. There's so many different ways that you can do these yoga poses and it's worth experimenting with all of them because you might just find that one suits your body better. And remember that what's working for you today might not work for you tomorrow. So it's good to have options as well. And yoga is not about, or certainly for me, yoga is not about rigidity and following the same pattern every single time. It's about paying attention, about listening to your body doing what your body tells you it needs. Getting tuned in, I guess, is, is the right way to, to put that. Let the right leg float down to the floor. Draw the left knee into the chest just for a moment. And bringing the left foot down to the floor. Rolling onto your left side, just slowly come onto your left side. And if you've got a soft block or a little cushion like I have, I want you to use this for under your head. Um, so lying on your side with your knees bent, bring your knees up to a right angle so your shins are in line with your mat. Your left arm is in line with your shoulder. Now, what you want to avoid here is having your head on the floor so your neck is kind of stretching out. So grab a little cushion. Make sure that it's not such a high cushion that it's pushing you in the opposite direction. So you want to try and have this neutral um, neck position. Reaching the left arm out in front of you, place your right palm on top of the left. Taking a breath in, you're going to reach your right palm away from you. Just feel that stretch through the right shoulder, reaching and drawing back, reaching out. It's just a small, small movement. Take it nice and slowly. Now you can allow this top knee to move with you. A little bit of movement so there's no twist in your back. It feels like, what am I doing? Is this even doing anything? It is. Small movements have a great deal of power. And the slower you go, and the smaller you make them, the more powerful they are. This time as you draw the right arm back, you're gonna reach it up. So your fingertips come up to the sky. And then bring it all the way back like a clamshell, reaching your right arm forward 
and then bringing the fingertips up to the ceiling, but this time maybe opening a little bit further and then coming all the way over again, reaching out and opening. Just pay attention to whether your body says it's okay to open more. Stay within those limits. One more, reach and open. Just hang here. If you find perhaps that your right hand can touch the floor, that's great. If it's just hovering and you can feel a stretch across the front of the body, perfect. Take some breaths. Shouldn't be any stress in the lower back. If you're feeling any discomfort, this might not be the best position for you. So maybe you just want to hang out with the hand in the air. You decide. Reaching all the way over. And then you're going to roll over onto your back and to the other side. Now I'm going to move to the other end of my mat. Just so that I don't have my back to you. But you just roll over. So lining up the legs with the front edge of your mat coming onto your side make sure that your head has got a little bit of support reaching this time the right arm in line with the shoulder taking a breath in reaching and drawing back tiny movement sliding your fingertips across your palm across the floor Feel, you can almost feel the tension beginning to just melt from your shoulders, from your spine. Begin to let your knee move in unison with the arm, synchronizing upper and lower limb. And then reaching the hand up, fingertips to the ceiling. Closing the hands, stretching and reaching up, maybe going just beyond the fingertips straight up. Again, just listen to your body, pay attention, feel what's working for you. Opening gradually and if you need to do this, maybe four or five, six times before you can open all the way, then that's completely fine. If you can open out, that's wonderful. If you can't, that's equally wonderful because it's exactly where your body's supposed to be. Take a breath. And then reaching up and over. Bringing yourself back to the starting position. Take this left palm, rolling yourself forward so that you can come all the way onto your belly. Be gentle as you roll over. Bring the palms to just below the shoulders. Take the legs a little bit wider on the mat and just let your feet press down into the mat. Taking a breath in, pull your shoulder blades down your back, your elbows reaching down towards the floor. As you take that action, you can feel your chest beginning to lift, raising your chest and then your rib cage away from the floor. You want to just take your hands off the floor so you're only rising up as far as you can go without using any extra push from your fingertips. So you're using your back muscles to raise you up. Keep your feet pressed into the floor. Don't let them lift off. If they lift, you're going too far. Slowly coming down to meet the mat. Take a breath in, draw the elbows into the side of the body and press down and that's going to raise your chest up. Feel a little bit of compression into the lower back, just a bit of a squeeze, it shouldn't be uncomfortable. And coming down. Last one. Inhale, head rises up, shoulders open. Draw the elbows into the sides and then pull them down as if you're trying to get your elbows to touch your butt. 
maybe noticing if you can rise up a little bit more and all the way down you can take your hands and make a little rest for your forehead bending at the knees begin to let your feet move like window wipers from side to side you might notice that you're a bit restricted in one direction more than the other doesn't matter if your feet touch the floor just let them move and fall wherever they want to go coming back to center draw the heels in towards the butt for a second and then stretch your feet out point the toes stretch as far as you can draw the palms back under the shoulders you're going to tuck the toes under now press through your palms raising up through the head the shoulders lift the chest and the rib cage you can press up with the arms drawing your hips upwards coming to all fours check in with your position the wrists and the shoulders are in line the hips and the knees make sure that your fingers are spread wide and you're pressing through the base of the fingers we take a couple of rounds of cat cow nice and simple take a breath in let your tailbone tilt up towards the sky squeeze the shoulder blades and tilt the chin towards the ceiling as you exhale curl the tailbone under feel your belly squeeze back towards your spine space between the shoulder blades as you drop the head to look between the legs inhale arching your back opening the chest lifting your gaze as you exhale rounding tucking feeling the space throughout the back of the body inhale reaching up opening the chest exhale tucking feeling that wave of motion traveling up your spine all the way to the top of your head coming to neutral bring the toes together walk the hands back towards the body coming up into a squat position just for a few seconds if i turn just a little bit so you can see perhaps a, a little bit clearer what i'm doing so the feet are touching almost they don't have to touch completely you're just going to lower your knees down towards the floor keep your hips sinking onto your heels tuck your small toe under if they have a tendency to curl up you don't want them missing out on all the fun and you can hang out here if this is enough for you if you're feeling it you're doing it grab your pillow and just use it for a little bit of support to keep the chest open and extending through the back hips down on the heels you might feel a sort of burning sensation uh, around the ball of the foot and around the toes that's what we're looking for if that's not feeling quite enough for you you can just walk the hands back towards the body and put your full weight directly down onto the heels now if you are going to do this just bear in mind Got to be able to sit here with a smile on your face <laughs> if you are hovering if you're holding on white knuckle trying to hold this position you've gone too far and it, it's just too, it's too much for your body right now so make sure that you can sit with a long spine your weight sinking down onto the toes check in that it's balanced and you're not shifting your weight too much to one side or the other take some breaths smile you're working all your lower body energy meridians. That's got to be worth a little smile, right? <laughs> Breathing out. You can walk the hands forward and just release the toes slowly. One foot at a time. Sinking back onto the heels and onto your hip. Coming to a seated position sitting up tall with the legs in front of you check in with your position once again especially in the upper part of the body it's so easy when the legs are straight to collapse into the spine to curl forward so make sure that you've got a little tilt through your pelvis you're able to rise up out of your hips sitting up tall if you're struggling a little bit with this again 
take a cushion or a rolled up blanket and just pop it under the knees. Give yourself the support that your body needs. Bending the right leg, interlace your fingers, hugging the knee in towards the chest so you can feel yourself sitting up even taller. Shoulders are down and away from the ears. You're creating some traction between your palms and the knee. That's going to help you to rise up. Feel your sit bones pressing down into the floor. Just take some breaths here. Now, if you can slowly release your hands and still maintain that seated position, then you can go into the twist. If you find when you release the hands that you drop back a little bit, then this is where I want you to hang out for now and just focus on building some strength here. So if you can hold the position, you know, twist your body to the left side, sweep your left arm behind you, your right arm coming up and over to either take a hold of the left thigh, maybe um, at the, the shin, twisting gently through the mid back. Make sure you're not leaning back as you do this. Press with the right knee into the upper arm. So you're not allowing this right knee to fall outwards, but keep it connected to the right arm. Take some breaths, feel that twist. And then releasing, slowly returning, coming back to where you started, drawing the chest upwards, belly coming into contact with the thigh if possible, creating some traction. And then a little extra challenge coming up onto the toes of the right foot. See if you can lift the toes away from the floor and return the right leg all the way down to the floor. So just checking in with the strength in those hip flexors, bending the left knee, drawing your belly towards your thigh, shoulders down and away from the ears. Just take some breaths and check in and remember what worked on one side might not work on the other. So it's always good to see if you've got the same strength, the same energy from one side to the next. So if you're feeling good, you're gonna take that right arm and sweep it all the way around. Left arm is coming up and over, coming into your twist. Make sure you're not leaning back so you can push through the fingers of the right hand to keep you upright. A little bit of contact with that left knee into the upper arm. Feel your body twist and open and releasing. Coming back to where you started, hugging the knee, drawing yourself tall up and out of your hips. Push up through the toes of the left foot and then you're gonna lift and lower. <laughs> Grab your cushion or your block, crossing the legs. Just raise the hips up a little bit higher than the knees, makes it comfortable to sit like this. Check in with how your body, how your back in particular is feeling. Palms to the belly, take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, opening the mouth with a, an audible sigh, release that breath out into the world. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more time. And you can sit for as long as you feel you need to in this position. Maybe taking a few minutes of meditation because your body's nicely warmed up and you should be able to sit perhaps a little bit longer than you might be used to. So you take the time that you need to just continue to connect with your body and you can use this practice at the beginning of the day, the end of the day, or even in the middle of the day, if you find that you're getting a little bit stiff or sore, if you've been working at the, the computer sitting at a desk for a long period, this isn't just for people with back problems. If you don't have back problems and you want to stay that way, this is a great little sequence for you to get into the habit of using. So thank you as always for choosing to share some time with me. Tell me in the comments what experience you had doing this practice. I always love to hear from you. Have a great day and a healthy and happy back.